We are live. Uh, good morning and welcome to uh, the Wake Dot Show. I'm Fisher, along with uh, Johnny Torres. We'll get to stuff you should know here in a couple minutes. Very excited. We got a, a musical act, our first musical act coming in today. Yeah. You excited about that? Oh, definitely. All right. Um, and who, who do we have coming in today? Erica? Erica DeSegli. Okay. So she's a Tampa Bay artist. Uh, she is... Uh, Frequently seen over at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, lots of great places all across Pinellas County. Uh, she uh, has a, a great kind of uh, variety to her repertoire, uh, if you will. And uh, and we're going to try to get fancy today, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, yeah, yeah, they're not going to come in here and set up in here. We're going to set them right. up at, down at the big studio and then do a little uh, switcheroo in the middle of the show. Yeah, exactly. So that should be very cool. That should be fun. What and, are the chances that we pull that off technically? Uh, I don't know. We 50-50? Have <laughs> I'd say we, we have a pretty good track record on that, so I think we'll do all right. Oh, but uh, how, how she's going to do a couple original songs uh, she's out there uh, promoting, and uh, maybe even sneak in a Christmas song. So. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, that'll be coming up at 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, sorry for getting the late start this morning. Uh, it has a lot to do with me um, and my mental health, why I could not go on the air until just now. As a matter of fact, I, I, I don't even feel good about going on the air right now. But we want to do the show for everybody because, you know, we know that they appreciate it and we've been building a great audience. And All right. Everybody's been very supportive of the show and, you know, we have uh, lots of high hopes for what we're doing here. Yeah, so do I. Um, uh, but then here, here's what happens. Uh, right before, uh, right where she knew I'd be starting the show, I get a, a list of five, five texts back to back to back getting lit up by my wife uh, for being here. Because this is a show that we're trying to get off the ground. This is a show that we're trying to get make uh, financially viable, economic, you know. And uh, o- only only the people you love have it seems like have the power to make you feel this way, to feel like a piece of shit uh, who's not even uh, who who. who uh, in times like this, Johnny. Are the times that I have to fight a spiraling down a because when when I get a, a series of tests like this to start off with, and I know we don't like to drop the F word here. In the first line, she writes, it's fucking ridiculous that it's been over a week and nothing's been done yet. You should not be doing anything at baking more pies that requires ignoring a potentially paying job. Finish your demo. If you don't, we're going to have a problem. I'm going to be livid. Well, and, and as uh, I've... Johnny, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. You this, know. this isn't fair to you or to all the people here that have been busting their asses, donating their time, not getting paid themselves for this. Because we think we're on to something special. And you have to deal with a guy that can't even deal with his own GD wife at home. I can't. Uh, you have somebody. You're, you, you, you got somebody sitting in this chair that can't even handle his own problems at home. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm affected by it. Well, you're a passionate guy. And... Um... And it's really hard because we talked about this, about whether or not to go on the air, right? And it's really hard to not talk about it because for... It affects me. Well, Because it, I'm not a professional. No, on the contrary. I think it's part of what we're, what we're groomed to do, which is to bring our life uh, to the broadcast every single day. And we, we translate these real-life experiences uh, to relate right for people to relate to for people to get to know us for people to build a relationship with the audience and uh it's hard to not talk about it first of all and second of all very few people understand the business and and so i mean i'm some years removed from it now but i mean i still keep in touch with a lot of my friends who are in radio uh i i do a lot of stuff kind of similar like uh, to this for bake more pies but very few people understand the challenges and the roller coaster that is working in the media. And especially when you're the most down and out, um, it, 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 they, don't, it, they don't understand emotionally how hard that is to 
Uh, and you talked with. you talked about passion uh, a second ago, and I have to have that. <laughs> I have to have passion. A lot of people can grind it out. Um, can sit in their call center for ten hours a day, and they figured out a way to cope. Uh, I I have to have passion, and I have to be excited about what I'm doing, or it becomes a, a very heavy weight that a drain. You know, it just drains the life out of me. Whatever it is. Um, and, uh, and it's hard because, uh, uh, if you don't have your partner on board, you know, what do you do? Yeah. And then, um, and you, uh, you have mornings like this, man. And it seems like it's always, <laughs> it's always Tuesday. I end up in a, a situation like this. Um, and what she's angry about this morning is that there is a, a a radio job opening here in town um to do afternoon drive at b98.7 which is a adult contemporary station chad and christy are doing mornings there and so when she saw this posting she got excited that maybe this is a real job with real benefits real pay and um and so she wants me to go for this job. Sure. I uh, So I've been working on a demo for the past week, but at the same time working on, you know, sizzle reels for here. And I can't do both because of the way that my brain works. Instead, it shuts me down. Well, we even talked about that, about the perfectionist it, aspect of it. Well, and- there's that, but there's also, there, it sends me into a spiraling uh, a, a pit of depression almost every single day because I. <sighs> well, you hate to even be in that position, and especially with someone like yourself who's been in the industry for so long. You know, you'd hope that we were kind of past this point, right? You know, you and and, and again, I've been there. You, you know, and you you'd think you're kind of past this point, and then you know, reality comes and just kicks you in the between the legs and then and you feel like you're back at square one and 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 part of the reason that we wanted to work with you here at bake more pies was because you know you've been in the market for so long and you have such a great name brand in the community um and uh and and oftentimes it's it's difficult after doing what you've done in this market to find yourself in the position that you're in uh but the industry is obviously in a major flux and um and and the jobs are becoming uh scarcer and uh, and it's it's also hard to be at that crossroads to decide okay do i stick with what i've done all this all this time or do i go off and try something else and see if there's something else i might be good at uh for those of you watching this morning the wake dot show welcome um uh, have you or are, are any people watching streaming this morning entrepreneurs or attempted entrepreneurship in the uh, past because uh, I have, there has been a couple of moments in the last couple of weeks that have helped me uh, mentally. And that is running into two different people who have, or sharing, you know, who can empathize. And they're trying to get businesses up and running as well. Um, And they have their wives at home who are resenting them right now for this. And uh, for for the ventures that they're trying to take. And so there is some solace in knowing that these are the kinds of things you have to go through before you can. You get out the other side, you can you can you show them, you you prove to them. But what sucks is. I. (coughs) Are these moments I wish I could have gotten this text and just went, oh, yeah, there she goes again. No big deal. Let's get, get on and just do the show and, you know, da, da, da. But what happened, what happened when that, what, you know, I don't know if you were, I think you were, you know, trying to get us on the, uh, on the stream over there. But what ha- did you see me physically what happened as this text came in? Oh, These yeah. Texts came no, in? I watched it in real time. <laughs> and a- like I said, right now, my, my body, you know, as far as anxiety and where my, my heart's palpitating and where I am right now sucks absolutely sucks um 
FYI, if you miss out on an interview or anything with Beasley due to not submitting a timely demo after I went through all the trouble of finding you a job, the job opening, I'm going to be livid. Then, love you, get home soon, exclamation point. Which she doesn't even realize, that's classic uh, abusive behavior. She doesn't even realize that that... When you, when you sit there and you lay into your spouse, when you lay into your significant other, and then you end it with a, mm, love you, ha ah, ha ha, that is bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Um, you should be at least putting it as uh, much effort into the demo as you are into BMP thing that is totally voluntary and unpaid. Paying gigs are one million percent more important uh, when we are in the position that we're in struggling to pay bills. I'm sorry for the rant in advance. It just hits me every once in a while when I feel like I'm talking to a wall. We need steady money. <laughs> Wait, hold on. There's a follow up. Uh. Because I, I, I started voicing out a, a text back. Is there anybody right. even watching this? Yeah, there's a handful of people. I I started to voice out a text that had a lot of F-bombs in it. Yep. And the point of it was going to be, uh, you can't send stuff like that to somebody like me before that person does a gig. See, I, I'm not a pencil pusher. I can't just sit at a desk all day long and fill in blanks and do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Sure. Um, I guess uh, you call me, I'm an entertainer, but there's a certain downside to that. I have to get myself into a frame of mind. That's why on Saturdays when I've got a wedding, I can't sit there and have a normal day with everybody else and then go do the wedding because I'm focused from the night before, from the week before on that person's wedding and... And I have to get myself into a certain frame of mind before I go to park and rec on a Wednesday night and do karaoke. I got to focus. Well, I don't have to focus as much doing Tuesday night's trivia. That's that's pretty. Uh, I don't get anxiety there. That's pretty. Ter- you know, I, I you know that's a, that's a good one. But um, but to send stuff like that right before somebody goes on the air, right before that, it it, it I cannot not have it affect me. Yeah, of course. So I I I. I, there was this whole thing back to her. A lot of F-bombs. And I put it down and I walked out of the building and I came back in and I go, Johnny, do you have any thoughts before I hit send on this? And he goes, just one. Don't hit send. <laughs> so I deleted it. And so here's the follow-up. Uh, there was a follow-up to all this. So I did not send that. did not send it. She goes, right. I already regret, regret my rant. You didn't need that first thing this morning. I'm sorry. I got freaked out when I woke up and the demo's still not done because I'm afraid you're doing everything possible to purposely miss out on the position because of BMP. Bake more pies. Uh, that's just what it seems like you're doing, but I should have waited till you were done, so I'm sorry. I just I don't want BMP to get in the way of real jobs that pay. <laughs> so all the work that you put into something like this. And this is what sucks, man, because I know if, if we get a chance, Johnny, if we get a chance then we are going to get this off the ground. Over the last four years since I left uh, Terrestrial Radio, which is not, which is kind of a misleading statement, once uh, you know Terrestrial Radio and I parted ways, uh, well, not really. I mean, I went back to AM820 for two years. Sure. So it's not like I fully left Terrestrial Radio. I have been attempting a lot of different ways to make it without traditional uh, you know, means. And to me, it is. it seems like we have the technology. Things are cheap enough. You have the reach, the platforms to get to people that we should be able to figure this out. Yeah. And I started with the Fisher experiment and then the Fisher experience. Uh, and then the FNK podcast, which we had some success there, actually got money coming in. Not enough money to keep it going. Um, and and then, how long did that take? Well, that had a lot to, that 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 that's also a little misleading because that wasn't about us having numbers and then uh, those numbers paying off for us. It was more about because I was with Jesse Cage at the time and because of his relationship with a uh, great bay. Um, okay. they were like, hey, listen, if you guys are trying something uh, together and we were doing it out of Janus Live, which in, enticed them, enticed them even more. Cool. Um, they go, listen, we're going to give you guys a few thousand dollars a month, you know, here in the beginning to figure it out. So they did that for uh, six months. 
um, which was amazing, which is awesome. So you guys might be going, well, let's let's do it again. Let's give it, make another phone call. We we will we just. Uh, I uh, want to get our feet under us first, and um, it's it's I, I I when I picture the future, and I picture that this is successful or there's something that's successful that comes out of this. I don't want to <laughs> resent my own wife in that moment. Yeah, when we're going, we did it. We're high fiving each other. And she comes up to give me a hug. I want to hug her back and say thank you for the support. Um, and, and then mornings like this, and when she gets, and it's every week. There is something every week in this category uh, that she's. And I understand, man. There we have it. We just bought a house. All of our bills have doubled, and it's happened at the same time that I lost a full time paying gig at uh, uh, at terrestrial radio. But let's not forget that. It was terrestrial radio that fired me. It's terrestrial radio that still owes me six hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, your boy, your boy Bruce Maduri, <laughs> uh, Johnny Torres has cut off uh, contact with me, and I guess is going to stiff me for the last money he owes me. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> here, let me share this with you guys. Um, the money that I'm owed is the money from the week of Hurricane Irma when I had to evacuate. Because I usually turn in my invoices on Friday, uh, well, I forgot that one because I was in a forced evacuation zone. There were other things on my mind that weekend. We were, were How far were we going to go? Were we just going to go to Land of Lakes? Were we going to go to all the way to Atlanta to avoid this storm? Uh, we end up staying in town. Uh, now I have to uh, get things prepared for my in-laws because they have nothing ready whatsoever. So I'm busting my ass to make sure that their house is uh, you know sealed. So it takes me a, a couple weeks to realize... Oh, shoot, I never turned in an invoice for the week that I had to evacuate. And this was at the same time that I got fired, right after I got fired. And so I sent one in. And um, I was told that it was cleared by Genesis Communications at AM820 News. Genesis Communications, Tampa. I followed up the next week, and the next week, and the next week, and the next week, and the next week. I was told... That no, you, it's been cleared that we, we to pay you, but we just it hasn't been cleared to actually cut the check yet. Okay, you know things happen. I know that uh, Genesis Communications and the Maduris, where they were hit hard with the hurricane too. They lost a couple of radio stations. They're waiting for insurance to come in. All right, all right it's fine, it's fine. So they follow up week after week after week after week, and finally go. Do, do you can you find out um, when it is that you think I will be paid? I mean, I, I understand th- things are happening, but can you find out when you think it's going to happen? No problem. I'll get right back to you. And that was it. That was the last I heard. So obviously, uh, the accountant went and uh, uh, inquired. Well, this is what I'm assuming anyway. I went and inquired, and uh, they said, uh, uh, never mind, screw him, and he's not getting paid. So that's terrestrial radio. The, the radio station she wants me to go uh, uh, talk to, an interview with, um, is a radio station that has flipped five times in the last five years. Has it really been that many? Um, they were... Because it used to be Wild. It was Wild. And then Wild went to the Stronger Signal. But then then they did uh, the Star 98... Or I, no, what was that? The, the Play. Play. Oh, right. It was Play. Yep. They tried the sport... The, the, just in the last few years, that's the sports station. Then it, it went, went to FM Bubba. Sports. Um, let's not forget one of my dear friends uh, took that gig and he was fired six months later. So it's not that that might not necessarily be good for me or good for us as a family. And that's another thing that I have to that 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 drives this this crap, Johnny. Is. Um, I don't know, I, I just I. We got there's so much else, uh, so much else to talk about today. We got a guest coming in, yeah. And also, uh, this is something that's been in my head since last Tuesday when I think I was in a similar mood. Um, I I want to remember, remember the list of all the names of the show or the show names that you guys came up with. Yeah, I want to go back over that list this week. Um. Because I think we can turn a lot of those what were potential show names into features and segments on the show. True. And and the reason being is because this show needs to be more formatted than it is. 
You know, we I, 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 I was telling uh, Johnny yesterday I'd ideally like to do stuff you should know at 7.05 and 8.05. We got a guest coming in at 8 o'clock. We're trying to figure that out. And I'm still just... Sucks. It sucks. Um, I guess if I had a... If I don't... If I had this is a, the other thing. This is what I think makes our show unique is the fact that do you think anyone would really have this kind of honesty and transparency on their show? Yeah, but is is it work for, for what? For someone to watch somebody go through exactly what they're going through at home? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so your your wife doesn't support you? Join the club. Why'd you get married? <laughs> if, well, <laughs> you know, yeah. do, you, do you think you're, you know, I, I, I don't know if I've told you the story um, when I was, talk, I was talking to my brother about uh, marrying my, my wife. And uh, this was before we were getting married and why I was going to propose and all this stuff. And um, I said uh, something to the effect of, well, because I think she is going to uh, help me reach my full potential. I think she's going to help me be the the man that I, I've always wanted to be. And he laughed, mockingly laughed in my face and goes, oh, that's what you think wives are for is to help the husband reach his full potential. <laughs> Well, you hear that, right? Behind every strong man is a strong woman or whatever that saying is. There's a lot of cliches out there. There's a lot of sayings out there that don't mean anything. Um, So uh, the reason that I say that this needs to be more formatted or what what I'd like to do is so that we go from like one segment to the next segment to the next segment. And yes, we need to have the show needs to have open segments for that. uh, I don't know. Conversation, that free flow conversation. Yeah. But I, because we have higher expectations for this show than just this show in Tampa. Right. And if we're going to take a, 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 a format and a business model and apply it to other places, potentially, then I don't we can't we can't rely on a person like me in every single market because you're going to run into people like me that's got shit. And if you just give them a, a free form for two hours, that shit's going to come out too much on, you know, onto the uh, onto this, uh, you know, this this show. Well, and I think the the structure helps you stay on track. Right. Helps you stay on track. You know, and, and I have less anxiety instead of getting that, you know, worked up, I guess, kind of the way that I pr- approach my show. And I I'm, I'm use this term very loosely because I know nothing about art. Is more like I guess performance art than anything else for me. <laughs> I get, I get, no, I get into a care, I get into a frame of mind, I get it, and then just boom, go right. right. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah. I, I first popped in my head last week. I was like, you know, maybe we should format this thing a little bit more. But like to your point, Johnny, uh, there is also something being uh, to be said, even though I'm sitting in it right now and I don't want to be in this part of it. Uh, for these moments, because I know that the uncomfortableness and the realness and the rawness, there is a a, a certain amount of uh, compellingness that goes along with that. But uh, but it hurts. It hurts my heart and my stomach, and I, I, I don't like this. I don't like this feeling. Well, and, and again, I think this is insight for people who love radio, love their local radio personalities and that sort of thing, because oftentimes what happens is is they just vanish. Now with social media, obviously, there's ways to keep in touch with them after they've moved on. Uh, but before that, I mean, if, if a station changed format or if they just let somebody go, that person would just up and vanish. Yep. And uh, and so I think people are fascinated. I mean, it's part of the reason why you see a lot of these shows that are kind of cropping up like uh, the uh, Talking Dead and things like that. Like people want to know what's going on behind the scenes. And I guess you're right, but when you're where you, when you're the thing that's going on behind the scenes, you don't want to believe that's what people. No, nobody wants to see this. That's because I don't want to go through this. I don't want to go through this feeling. This feeling sucks. Yeah, and you, you, and I have this feeling wanna, too often. People don't want to see how the sausage is made. But like you said, uh, next thing you know, they put on television shows showing you how the sausage is made, and they're getting you know t- five million viewers a week, yeah. an episode. So uh, well, let me run through the comments real quick, oh, uh, just to give you a little, just to give you a little break. <laughs> but uh, Blake Bass says, "What's up, fish?" Uh, Jeff, Miss you, Blake. Uh, hey, Blake, they still owe me six hundred and fifty dollars over there. Can you go talk to somebody and <laughs> yeah, see if they could uh, hook a brother up? It would really help in my my household right now. I might, I'm a, I might have to reach out to Mister. Uh, 
Maduri. You know, you know. I, I don't mean to put you in an awkward position, but uh, yeah, you do know. You do know him. I do, and actually, uh, I got him his uh, very good-looking administrative assistant uh, just recently, and so. Oh, so he's hired a new employee to pay a hot <laughs> chick to be his uh, assistant. That's right. Uh, but he won't uh, uh, send me a check for six hundred and fifty dollars yeah. for the week of Hurricane Irma when I had to evacuate. And th- and that's what I take issue with. Right, because you figure if someone is laying people off, right, they're cutting back on expenses because, uh, like you said, Hurricane Irma, it's radio, you lose advertisers, whatever the case was. All right, cool, you get that. But then when you see just weeks later, he's now bringing on new staff, you know, at that point you're like, well, what's the deal here? If it had been a clean break, right? If you'd, you'd been paid all your money and oh yeah, you know, no whatever. Right, that, hey man, hire whoever you want, right? Yeah, it's it's you know. the fifth time it's happened in my career, and no I'm big... sure she's cheaper than than you were, right. right? So, and she's not on air talent; she's doing marketing and administrative work. Um, but the fact that he does owe you what is seemingly not a lot of money for a, for a business of his size, uh, I think, is unacceptable, and 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 certainly when again he's. Uh, also bringing on new people. All right. So what are some of the other comments? <laughs> so, all right. Um, Jeff God Charles says, uh, good morning, guys. He goes, I follow you in part because of your honesty, Fisher. Um, yeah, but uh, Jeffrey, do, how how much can you take? Can you take once a week me coming in here and going, guys, I got to start to show off this because I want to like this because I want to throw up. I have to get this part out first because I am nauseous right now. Oh, you're being a little melodramatic there. No. I'm not. I wish I wasn't like this, but this kind of stuff uh, can have an effect, and when it does, it is a it sucks. Yeah. All right. All right next, our, our buddy David Capote watching as always. Hey, Dave. I know. I got to go see him too. I owe him some work. Speaking of work, uh, what do you mean you owe him work? Procrastinating work. work. Yeah, I'm helping him out with his uh, business. So. Uh, uh, we should have them on as our first uh, business partner, but yeah. instead of them like paying to be on the show, be like, here's the, here's the deal. I'll work it out. Uh, we you do uh, dry cleaning for us around here, <laughs> x amount of dollars worth every month. <laughs> hey man, and you come on the show and be uh you know uh, and we'll do what we do. That adds up. Yeah, the laundry <laughs> bill adds up. Hell yeah. Uh, Elliot uh, says uh, I'm watching slash squirming. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Elliot. Don Marino, not Dan Marino. Uh, <laughs> Don, Don Marino, who has quite a lot of lady friends. Hello. Uh, having been married and now divorced, text is the worst way to communicate for spouses. It really is. Yeah. And I understand her frustration. And I know last week it was about this time that you tuned, tuned in, Johnny. Or was that the week before when you were uh, out for a day? It, that was two weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah. No, no, no. That was last week because last week was our second week. No, because last week was uh, no. Last week was Thanksgiving week, so it was. The oh, week you're right. That. It was the week before. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Johnny, too, you know, all of a sudden fires up the stream right when I'm sitting there talking about. Now, listen, don't tee off on my wife, because I went through a similar kind of thing then, and uh, and I do want to make it clear that she has supported me quite, you know, uh, quite a bit over the past. You know, four, I haven't had a steady gig really in four years, so, in all fairness. That can put somebody on edge, right? Sure. A, just a normal person on edge, yeah. An average, regular person on edge. Now, add to that there's certain parts of her personality that uh, need more security than that, yeah. And so she is over the edge. Or you'll see this once a week. It's usually on a Monday that I get something like this. It's uh, she wakes up for the weekend. I don't know what it is. Something. I guess uh, everything starts to flood in. She starts freaking out that we might not have enough. And then, you know, I, I, I get that. But um, <sighs> welcome to the Wake Dot Show. Well, and again, uh, uh, it's a good opportunity to remind people to like and share the show. All right. Let's, let's go, go up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is another reason why. Okay. Let's just right. get to some stuff you should know. How about that before we. Uh... All right. Let's just uh, real quick. Hello to Murda Silva. Uh, my buddy, Matt Evans. Patricia. Awake them, ball. Any other com- Go ahead if you want to throw out any Chris. other comments that are worth. Um, no, well, Jeff chimes in again. He says, every day if it's real, uh, every day if it's real, Fisher. Every day uh, if it's again. real. Life ain't a picnic. Oh, no, it's not. So Chris also, Chris Brown, hello. Uh, been uh, uh, tuning in, and uh, he says good morning, and he's listens all, or he watches all week. Uh, Pete Dudley says, power through it, dude. I, w- I, I am. I continue to do so. 
Oh, David wants us to go till 10 a.m. So we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll keep that in our back pocket. Oh, so so uh, I, he's already a sponsor of the show and calling the shots. Is that what it is, Dave? <laughs> Look, Dave. Hey, if you want to come on the show and sponsor the show, we'll throw in a, uh, an extra hour. Yeah, you come in and do the uh, the nine o'clock hour with us. Yeah, and then Elliot says, "Just wait until there's a baby." <laughs> oh man, it's all going to pay off in the end. Yeah, it's all going to pay off. <laughs> Let's get to stuff you should know. The state of Florida has paid more than $11 million over a 30-year period to settle hundreds of cases that allege the state workers were sexually harassed by supervisors and co-workers or were forced to work in hostile work environments. The information released Monday showed that more than 300 cases have resulted in payments since 1987. Amounts range from 5,500 payments to a Florida State University student who alleged harassment from a supervisor to a $1.3 million payment to settle a class action lawsuit against or filed by nurses who worked at state prisons. Nearly 60% of the cases involved employees who worked in the Department of Corrections. Damn. Um, Again, positions of power. Yeah. Uh, Publix is delivering liquor. Are they delivering now? <laughs> I was about to say, I was Man. Like, we, might, we might have to hit them up for a morning order. Uh, yeah, could you bring by a big old coffee with with uh, some some Baileys in it? About a third of Baileys? <laughs> yeah. Ow. Maybe, uh, maybe throw some Jameson in it while you're at it. Uh, Publix customers will be able to order liquor either online or on Publix mobile app. The same app through which groceries can be ordered. Uh, when people search for a store in the area, a Publix liquors option will pop up. If it's available, it's not available in all areas right now. Uh, so it's uh, it is available in a lot of markets throughout uh, the state of Florida. So if you want to give that a go, how? I don't know, man. I, I know that we are in an economy now where what's driving part of the economy is finding out uh, all these different ways to get your stuff delivered to you, no matter what it is. Yeah. No, I guess I guess it makes perfect. I actually, it's not a bad idea. I'll give you a perfect example of how uh, beer runs, alcohol delivery, uh, came in clutch uh, for me personally. Well, let's hear it. So I was at my uh, be- uh, one of my closest friends, uh, Nebel's wedding. He had a beautiful wedding over at the Cuban Club in Ybor City, um, but he has a very large and strong um, church. Uh, family you know he, he's very connected to his church and and his wife is as well and so the majority of the guests were from his church um well i guess to not potentially offend or make anybody uncomfortable uh he decided to have just beer and wine at his um at his wedding could have been a, an economic move too i don't know um my buddy matt and i not beer and wine drinkers <laughs> And so we're like, all right, this isn't going to work. So we're sitting there as... You guys called Uber Eats for liquor at a wedding? I, I forget the name of the service, but it's something to that effect. It's, it wasn't Uber Eats, but it was some... Um, and and legit ordered a bottle uh, uh, and had it delivered to the Cuban Club. That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, that is awesome. And then, of course, you play keep away the entire time because, you know, you don't want to piss off the catering staff either. So. Well, I yeah, they need to do late night stuff because I think about, and this was in my much, much younger days, um, you know, early 20s, when you ran out of beer and liquor. What'd you do? You went for a beer run. Somebody would go for a beer run, and that right. person was never sober. Yeah. You know? Right. Uh, so this is a perfect then. Instead of uh, those beer runs, just settle down, call Publix, they'll send it to you, except that they're not going to be open at 1 o'clock in the morning. I think this will do what Uber has done for drunk driving. I think this will help reduce drunk driving for maybe. that very reason. Maybe. Because even if you are an alcoholic or, like you said, maybe you're just having a good time at a party and you run out of uh, essentials, you know, the, the last thing you want to do is send somebody out there to go get that stuff, uh, especially if they've been drinking. And, and they'll do it. If they don't have a better option, they will do it. And I think the more prominent uh, and accessible these kind of services become, I think the more people will make the right choice. I think about uh, Tallahassee in my early 20s and uh, going on a beer run late at night. But if I remember correctly, it was Tallahassee. That's Leon County, right? Yep. Their liquor, you know, things were shut down by midnight or whatever it was. So if you wanted to go get something after a certain time, you'd have to go to the next county. Or we'd go into Georgia. I can't remember what it was. You'd cross either the state line or a county line and go get uh, beer there. So I'm thinking about how many drunk kids are doing that, you know, every single night. Um, and hopefully this the delivery will <laughs> uh, help curb some of that stupidity. Next up, the Harvey Weinstein scandal uh, continues to unfold. British actress Cadian Noble 
filed a now this is uh, this is next level stuff by the way because we're talking about they're trying to uh, stick sex trafficking charges which uh, that's to that's, this one that's a whole nother thing I mean at that point now you're not even getting into hearsay I mean there are actual charges that can be brought up on this and, and likely in him up uh, in jail or uh, hanging out with Roman Polanski. Well, they filed a civil suit on Monday in New York alleging that Harvey Weinstein forced her into sexual acts while abo- abroad in 2014. Even more damning, the suit obtained by USA Today claims that the Weinstein Company violated federal sex trafficking law, quote, by benefiting from and knowingly facilitating, unquote, Weinstein's foreign business travels in which he would, quote, rec- recruit or entice female actors into forced or coerced sexual encounters on the promise of roles in films or entertainment projects. So it's kind of, I don't know if this is going to work or not. It looks like kind of a loophole thing. What they're claiming is that the Weinstein Company uh, would would set up these interviews with actresses while he was abroad, right. making sure that they found ones that were really hungry for work and make sure that they put her in a very uh, uh, precarious situation. And then however she you know gets out of it, she gets out of it. Um, I doubt that's going to stick. You know, unless they find some emails or find some, you know, they're doing this on purpose for sex, you'll definitely, for rape. Yeah, you'll definitely need some evidence <laughs> for those type of charges. Um, right. But, I mean, again, that that could be uh, the worst of all of his troubles uh, if, if they're able to kind of connect those dots. Next up, Trump calls Warren Pocahontas at an event honoring Native American veterans. McCain says Trump doesn't have any principles and beliefs. We will come back to this. Uh, Before the show's end. (laughs) I'm sure we will. A Northwest Indiana high school English teacher has been charged with felony drug possession after she was recorded by students snorting cocaine in her classroom. That's pretty baller. (laughs) Man, that is just... I mean, talk about somebody hating life. Yeah, you, you, you're, that's a whole different, you're doing rails in front of the kids. I, I, I didn't see the video, uh, so I don't know if she was trying to hide it around the corner and they caught her, or, or she was like, you know what, I can't deal with you guys, hold on. <laughs> you rip off a couple of rails, you sit down, you sit down, I run this classroom. Now you gotta admit, it's hard to make the argument that teachers aren't getting paid enough when you can afford cocaine. <laughs> Touche. Uh, Speaking of which, uh, right here in the uh, Bay Area, Hillsborough County teachers yesterday walked out of class. Not really. They waited till the end of school. But here's the thing. They're only going to be working eight hours a day as it stands right now because uh, normally I guess they do a lot of extra things that they don't get that aren't in their contract. Oh, yeah, they do. Um, So uh, because of their contract dispute, they uh, they say that they are they are owed a pay raise. Um, they're just going to do the bare essentials. They'll be there from you know for their eight hours. The, do whatever they got to do within that eight hours, and that's it. They're not going to focus on a, a school after that. I don't know how this is going to play out because on the other side of things, the county's going. We don't have any money. We'd love to give you guys more money. It's just not there. Well, that's part of the problem is the fact that they've mismanaged uh, the funds that they get. I mean, I think we're talking about somewhere close to or over or just over a billion dollar budget, uh, and the. What's most frustrating is that once you start to peel back the layers and you look at where they've spent the money, uh, these people are completely inept. Um, And you get these ridiculous ideas of for things that have nothing to do with their main. Excuse me. Just bit my tongue. Their main objective. I know uh, that's like the fourth time in like three days. Um, Their main objective, which is to educate children. You getting lazy mouth, boy. What's happening over there? No kidding. Um, But. You know, Susan Valdez, perfect example. She's probably the one that irks me the most, uh, was trying to roll out this idea where they would put Wi-Fi on school buses because she claimed that this would give kids the opportunity to do homework on the bus. Never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there'll be one kid yeah. uh, that does homework the first day until she gets beat up, and that'll be it. They'll be all playing video games. And then... And porn. The, the second offshoot of that idea was that then they would take the buses and park them in low-income areas to provide Wi-Fi or internet hot access yeah, as a hotspot for the people who live in those communities. 
also not the objective of the Hillsborough County School System. No, I, you know, I, I appreciate what she was, uh, you know, trying to do or what she's thinking or uh, the long lines it to she's the, thinking. Leave but. it to the city. Leave it to the county. That's not something for the school system to be spending money on. Let's go to the university system now. And this is a story that Johnny sent me yep. that made him laugh. An Indiana University health nurse who posted racially charged comments on Twitter is no longer an employee in the health system. The tweet posted Friday afternoon from an account named Night Nurse said every white woman raises a detriment to society when they raise a son, someone with the highest propensity to be a terrorist, rapist, racist, killer, and domestic violence all-star. Historically, every son you have had should be sacrificed to the wolves, bitch. Yeah, the punctuating, I think, was probably my favorite part. Damn. Is this pointed? Is she talking about, like, one... Uh, every white woman raises a... No, oh, she's everybody. talking about every white woman. Yeah. Historically, every son you had... Whoo, that is an angry, angry person. Uh, she's been fired. And we'll come back to that story, too, because that, that isn't the end of the tweets. There's more. Oh, there is more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, that wasn't just... That was just a... That's not just a one-off. And I'm sure getting fired over this, I think, is only going to... Uh you know, just ignite that passion just a little more. And, and then she now she actually has somebody to blame for her failure. Yeah. And a West Virginia man was sentenced to five years probation and 50 years of supervision. No jail time. Five years probation, 50 years supervision. After his conviction of impregnating an 11-year-old girl in 2011 who was forced to get an abortion. How does something like that happen? I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm assuming that the guy knew the judge, uh, or or maybe they're a part of the same fraternity, like the uh, the, the guy out at was it uh, was at U, USC or UCLA that raped the girl at the dumpster, yep. and he got three months. You know, the judge just had they just happened to be fraternity, you know, brothers or whatever. However, that works in the same fraternity, went to the same school. It amazes <clears> me they think that nobody's going to connect the dots. Uh, can somebody please explain to me how does how's this happen? Is it because it's West Virginia? A man impregnates an eleven year old child. She's forced to get an abortion. He gets in front of a jury, a judge, and gets probation. How the f does that even happen? Yeah, we'll come back to that story in the show too and see if we can figure it out. Uh, this is the Wake Dot Show. And that is stuff you should know. Wait a second. I think I think we're onto something now. <laughs> ah, so how's our how's our musical guest doing this and we, morning? And we got it in uh, at eight oh five. Eight oh five. So there's a always a glimmer of hope. Uh, so how's our musical guest looking? How's everything coming along downstairs? Uh, Chords is uh, getting them all set up, I believe, and uh, so uh, hopefully, let's you know the the idea here is is that. We'll play maybe a little of uh, Bake More Pies, uh, Bake More Music, I'm sorry, from maybe this month. You want to do that? We could do that so we could take a break, and then that way you get to run downstairs and uh, and then host our own musical guest. Uh, I think that'd be a good transition. And uh, So you know. we're not going to do that now, though. We'll wait till we get the word from Chords and then, and then do that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly, because okay. uh, we got to make sure that we get him piped in through, uh, through the uh, remote uh, viewer here let's run through uh some of the uh you know we'll, we'll go back over some of the stuff you should know that we uh, hit and some other stories that wasn't in stuff you should know and this is one of those coming from a uh, w-e-a-e-s-h e-s-h dot com um police stop a tiny car with a giant tree this is out of massachusetts it looks like a classic scene from christmas vacation where the griswold family puts a, a tree that is comically large on top of their station wagon except this time it happened in Massachusetts. They posted the uh, photo of the massive evergreen on top of a small blue car. Uh, who, why, how, how does this person even, uh, how do you go down this path and think that this thing is even going to be a good idea? A, that you're going to get it home without uh, hurting anybody, and you're going to get it home without being pulled over. They, uh, the, and it said, uh, sub, Subbury or Sudbury PD would like to remind you to transport your holiday trees responsibly. Um, did they get a ticket? I guess not. They didn't give him a ticket. They just said, hey, uh, you know, I guess they, I don't know if they escorted him. It didn't say whether or not he got a ticket. It's hysterical. Uh, you know, and you got to, you got to give people props for their ingenuity. I mean, I want to see the video that got this tree on top of the car. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's not from a Lowe's parking lot right there. That's not from a Home Depot. <laughs> that's not Mike's Christmas tree. Uh, we <laughs> we stop by uh, Lowe's on Sunday to get our Christmas tree. That's where we we'll get at one of those kind of places every single year. Yeah, and uh, usually pretty good prices. And uh, there was there was eh. they they said something about we had a shipment coming in later in the week. We're like ah, we'll be back later in the week. Uh, but that will not be my that will not be the size of our tree. I am and excited. there's no way. You know that there's no way that that tree is going to fit inside that house. And I am. I'm excited. You know that now that we're homeowners. I mean, I go back and forth of being excited and uh, terrified. Uh, but uh, but to be able to put a tree up and ha- start to have that feeling mm-hmm. of home, not just owning a house or living in a house, but have that feeling of home. Uh, well, you know, there's still a lot of work to do in my household before it starts to feel like home. As someone who was renting a home recently, now I'm in an apartment, but as someone who was renting a home recently, um, I now understand why people live in condos. <laughs> well, that's what people tell you that have been in homes, you know, for 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you the same thing. <laughs> they can't wait to get to some place where they don't have to take care of the yard or anything like that. All right. <clears throat> a woman gets a birthday card from her dad. Everyone loves getting cards on their birthday, but a Tennessee woman got a card from her father that she she'll cherish cherish forever. Bailey Sellers' father, Mike, died stage four pancreatic cancer in 2013, just a few months before her 17th birthday. But her dad made sure he could still celebrate her special day, even in death. Before his death, he prepaid a flower shop to deliver flowers and a card to her every year on her birthday. The last of the flower and cards came last week on her 21st birthday. When I opened the card, I especially felt him with me. It's a cold feeling, then a happy feeling at the same time. In the card that came with his uh, this year's flowers, Mike Sellers told his daughter this would be his last letter to her. <laughs> By the way, that, I'm not Panama. I'm not faking that. I, 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 over, <laughs> I overplay it to make it look like I'm faking it. But uh, for, I, listen. Just to convey the emotion. Yeah. <clears throat> I get into the stories. Uh, in the card that came with this year's flowers Mike Sellers told told his daughter this would be the last one quote until we meet again and that she shouldn't shed any more tears over him that's okay you don't have to I will (laughs) (laughs) he he goes on to say I am in a better place Um, you are and will always be the most precious jewel I was given I will be with you through many uh, through every milestone just look around and I'll be there (laughs) all right I'm, I'm glad that you don't have control of Zoom over there. Yeah, right? <laughs> go, go a little wider here. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Could you cut to you? <laughs> could, you could the ski? Uh, could, you, could you put up? Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Uh, we, we needed, uh, we, yeah, that's what we needed to come up with a little graphic of, you know, how. Well, you should just put the baby mask on is what you should do. <laughs> there's, yeah, when, and, and make it look like there's a technical difficulty. Yeah. And have me crying. On the graphic there. All right, so we'll continue like this. Uh, touched by her father's gesture, Sellers tweeted a photo of the flowers, the card, and an old photo photo of her dad hoisting her up on her shoulder during a long ago trip. To- <laughs> Come here, baby mask. Come here, baby face. <clears throat> All right, so we may uh, we're we're gonna call an audible here. I think we're gonna ready. We might- we might be bringing Erica and uh, her guitarist up here. Okay. And uh, so we're, I'm, I'm talking to chords here. And All right. No problem. We'll uh, figure this out one way or another. Thank you so much for joining the Awake Dot Show. Uh, if you're joining us late, you missed something good there in the beginning. Well, I don't know if it's good. <laughs> you'll just miss. You missed how we got here in the Drama. beginning. Yeah. In the beginning of the show. So you'll, uh, after we're done with the live feed, you want to go back and start from the uh, beginning. Yeah. Chris Brown uh, saying, uh, I'm with you, buddy. You've always been real and give your opinions. Um, (laughs) Sarah uh, writes in. She goes, I'm with David on adding the uh, 10 o'clock hour, uh, the 9 to 10 o'clock hour. He goes, but only because I'm in Central Standard Time. (laughs) So uh, selfish, but that's okay. You know, I don't mind you being (laughs) selfish with our show. Um, And uh, Elliot says, uh, I go back and forth between being excited and terrified will be the name of your autobiography. Yeah. (laughs) that's funny Uh, the Pocahontas stuff yesterday yes love this story Uh, our 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 president (laughs) (laughs) oh boy honoring Native Americans his brain 
is trying. I, I'm watching, and I'm going. His brain's trying to connect something here. You can see it working. And and he's. Let's just get to this part. And and again, he's somebody who is, especially at his age, you know, he's he, it's he's not going to be allowed to be told what to do. It's not just his and, age. I, I think that's his personality too. You know, no, no, no. But what I'm saying is, is like rarely will you see him on a script, right? Um, when giving a speech or doing any kind of a ceremony, because that's just not his style. And 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 when he is on script, and you're sitting there watching, you're waiting for that moment where you can tell his brain's like, "F this! I got to say something! I got to say something!" <laughs> he just right. looks right in the camera, like the, yeah. the Kanye West moment. George Bush hates black people. What? Where did that come from? And he's Donald not, when he's on when he's on script, he's pretty good. I mean, you know, you can kind of see the the Trump that we all kind of grew up watching. You know, it's when he goes off script, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Uh, so President Trump on Monday referred to Senator Elizabeth Warren as Pocahontas at an event honoring Native American code talkers who served in World War II. Quote, you were here long before any. By the way, he did have a script. Did you know that? Oh, I'm sure he does for everything. No, 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 no. Well, he No, he had a speech for this and then said uh, because uh, one of the gentlemen had given a speech before him, one of the uh, code talkers, you know, he's 90 something years old, served in World War Two. And the, it was a, an amazing speech. So the president said, hey, listen, that was so great. Uh, I don't need to follow it up and, and say and say the same thing. Is what he said. <laughs> I don't want to follow your greatness up with my greatness. My greatness will probably overshadow your greatness since I'm the greatest thing that's ever been great. Well, uh, he certainly accomplished that. Yeah. Quote, you were here long before any of us were here, Trump said, standing beneath a portrait of former President Andrew Jackson. So far, so good. Well, there's some irony to that. Well, okay, first of all. And some instances. Jackson was a Democrat, all right? Okay, first. well, Democrats were very different back then than they are now. Second of all, these paintings always sit in the same space. No, that's not true. He put it there. there the painting that was there before he put that there was, I believe, Martin Luther King Jr. No. He put that, uh, unless we're talking, unless I'm uh, talking about busts now. But here's the thing. Andrew Jackson's the guy that signed the whatever it was he signed. I know, right. Yeah. Right. That Trails forced. Tears and right. all that stuff. And yes. So it's a little, ins- okay, maybe no, I'm wrong. Yes, somebody yeah, has, I would, no, I would, don't get me wrong. If somebody, I'm setting up this moment, I'm not setting it up in front of the Andrew Jackson portrait, okay? That's right. Well, no, and that was going to be my point, is, is that somebody at the White House should have realized that this was a horrible they did. place or at least Come on. move the painting and... It's like, how does this stuff happen? Like, you know, because I know some of the people in that building and I know that they're professionals and they've been doing this for a long time. Like, how does stuff like this happen? They go, uh, hey, we're going to move that because of this. And then the president goes, no, leave it. That's how it happens. You were here long before any of us, Trump said, standing beneath the portrait of former Andrew President Andrew Jackson. Although we have a representative in Congress who say they were here a long time ago. <laughs> they call her Pocahontas. no. No, you call her Pocahontas. <laughs> Turning to the veterans, Trump said, but do you know what? I like you. The president made the remark in the Oval Office standing besides three Navajos who helped the U.S. Marine Corps develop a secret code during World War II. The three cold talkers did not react to Trump's remarks. Trump has repeatedly used the derisive or derisive uh, nickname to refer to Warren poking fun at her claim of Native American heritage. Quote, this was supposed to be an event to honor heroes, people who put it all on the line for our country, Warren later said on MSNBC. It is deeply unfortunate that the president of the United States can't even make it through a ceremony honoring these heroes without throwing out a racial slur, unquote. But Trump's top. And the thing is, is that he's, he's absolutely clueless on this because it is the equivalent of sitting there and you have a couple of. Um, uh, 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 men of African Americans, black guys up there that helps you take down the Nazis, and you're honoring them, and uh, and you go, hey, hey, yeah, you guys, you guys are black, you know, we we've got somebody in the representatives claims he's black, we call him Kunta Kinte. <laughs> so anyway, we're honoring you today. Good job with that whole Nazi thing. Absolutely clueless. See, I, I, I think, um, well, I've always, I've always thought the whole Pocahontas thing was hilarious. 
Um, it's funny for one second. You know, she was somebody like us, so many other people who uh, who think that there is a, a Native American blood in them from some, uh, according to their family. Oh, yeah, well, there's, we got a little, we're one sixteenth Navajo or whatever. See, I think she knew all along. I think it was all BS. I, I don't. I, I go back looking over. So you you think that she only did this for political gain? Sure. It doesn't, doesn't seem, I, I I think it's just something she threw in there like anybody else. It's like, oh, I've got this. Like if, uh, you know, those people who are rich as hell and then they sit there and they talk about their grandfather being so poor and their family Hillary came Clinton. from. Yeah, right. They, they, they came from nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, maybe two generations ago. But you're doing just fine. And you've been doing just fine for a long, long time. So don't sit there and act like, uh, you know, you're one of the common man. So, well, I, well, where I disagree with all this is the fact that it's a racial slur because it's not. I mean, there there yes, are is. there are plenty of racial slurs, but it's not it's well, not it, a racial it, in slur. This, it's you're about not context. Offend, you're not going to offend anybody by calling them Pocahontas. Because what you're what you're saying is well, uh, it, yes, because it's the same thing as uh, you know you got a couple of black guys in front of you, and all of a sudden you want to make so you start calling the uh, you know somebody else a kunta, kunta kente. You're you are it is all about race. It is all about. Uh, and, and so and to is sit there and just play, I'm it not is offensive. It's, I'm not saying it's not offensive. I'm saying it's not a racial slur. I'm not saying it's not used as a, 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 to be offensive. He's obviously saying it to be offensive, but the word itself is not a racial slur. Right. It's a person's name. But in context, this is where you get to uh, pick out whether something is uh, insensitive or not and uh, is a racial slur or not. And in this context, it is. He's calling every all Indians are, are Pocahontas. No, he's just calling Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas. Mm. Uh, anyway, I mean, he didn't throw up his hand and say how and that sort of thing. Keith Olbermann says that our president is going to uh, be impeached. The nightmare presidency of Donald John Trump will end prematurely and end soon. And I am it's also you have no idea how great they were. What oh, they've done course. for this country. Oh, of course. And <laughs> the st- <laughs> of course, Donald has to jump in. Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, Keith Olbermann. I couldn't stay. In all due respect, I know he's a very intelligent Strength guy. And the bravery and the love that they had for the country and that you have for the country. So that was the ultimate statement from General Kelly, the importance. And I just want to thank you because you're very, very special people. You were here long before any of us were here. Although we have a representative in Congress who they say was here a long time ago. See, this is where... He thinks he's connecting. He thinks he's connecting with uh, somebody right now, and the, and he's he's doing the exact opposite. But you got to think that the, I think the caller Pocahontas, the but guy you know the guy up the street like in you. New York City, because you know, you building a high rise, you know, the person out working the farm, that sort of stuff. They hate these kind of people. They hate Elizabeth Warren. They probably hate a bunch of the Republicans too, McConnell and all these guys, and and. They eat that stuff up. Obviously, we we take it a little more seriously, and we realize the 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 damage that's being done by doing this sort of thing. Uh, but I think that the average person, the the person that you never would have thought, the reason the polls were all wrong was because the average person um, hates Washington politics and 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 all these elected officials. Uh, just as much as he claims to through a lot of these insults, and they. Oh, listen, I understand why his base eats this up, um, but he's he's president of the United States of America. He's not president of uh, you know thirty five percent of America, and uh, that inc- also includes special. Native Americans. You are special people, you are really incredible people, and I have to, from the heart, from the absolute heart, we appreciate what you've done, how you've done it the bravery that you displayed and the love that you have for your country. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, that's, I, I guess uh, you, you look at that depending on how you look at your political, uh, the, you know, your ideology. Now let's go to uh, Senator McCain who uh, I, I'm enjoying watching this tit for tat. How about you? What will you discover with the new um, for uh, uh, between McCain and because McCain's dying. Yeah. And he doesn't he's never given a shit and he could give a shit even less right now. Um, And I know that if you're a Republican, you really don't like John McCain because he seems to be uh, stopping a lot of the things that you're trying to get through. Right. But uh, but from from a from a somebody who's no party affiliation that watches this, 
I I liked when I like when I saw Elizabeth Warren standing up to Clinton and Obama. Um, I like when McCain is standing up against his president. I like to see that kind of stuff. I want to see more of that kind of stuff. I don't take I don't take uh, as much issue with that. It's the fact that he's if he was taking the more principled side, right? Like as you were saying, as a Republican and doing it for Republican reasons, then. I don't think anybody would take issue with it. Like, they would be all for it, right? Um, but it's the fact that he, like you said, is really being a, a big doorstop in the way of, uh, of the Republican agenda. When, you know, millions upon millions of dollars have been spent to get these people elected and to get a specific agenda pushed through uh, Congress. And, and he is continually uh, in the way of that, of, of, of them accomplishing that. And but he's not doing it just to be anti-Trump. He's doing it because this is what he believes. I think it's and, a little bit of both. And I'll listen. I'm sure there's some personal things there. But it's not in line. Let's not Oftentimes, forget what tr- it's Trump not in line with with the uh, with the Republican Party platform. If I'm if I'm Senator McCain and I spent five years in the hole, uh, and I come home and I have a douche president like that saying, or, or a guy running for president saying. Uh, yeah, I don't like losers. Like the people who get caught, I like people who don't get caught. Right. Um, then yes, you're right. He's in my that, crosshairs until. But that's I'm what dead. I'm saying. Like that. That's that's where I think a lot of this motivation is coming from. What does well, he have to lose? Then the president brought it on himself. No, I I agree with that. Look, I mean, he was burning bridges before he even got into office. Uh, uh, both of them were. Sure, of both course. Both of them burned their fair share of bridges. But but McCain has every right to uh, uh, to your point. McCain has every right to be that uh, that rock in the shoe. He's Donald not Trump, in my opinion, my view. He's not being obstructionist just to be an obstructionist. I think I think he, he took a lot of what he did during the campaign personally, and I, of course, I think there's a lot of that motivating him to be this. It might fuel some of that. I'm sure it does. Uh, but he's also looking at this as are a lot of other Republicans said these agendas that you were talking about that they're trying to push through are not the agendas that they sold the American people. They they were disguised to look like that, but they. If we end up pushing these things through, we're going to come back to these same issues within three months to 18 months, depending on the issue we're talking about. And so let's get it right now is what uh, McCain's been saying. Well, that's because he doesn't have say, to worry but... about his political future. But the other people that are worrying about the political future, they were going, shh, shh, no, 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 no. Let's push this through. Then we can say, look, we got tax reform. We told you tax reform. These taxes lowered over here, even though we're going to not talk about all the stuff over here that's going to ruin everything. Well, he's trying to take the, the higher mantle this, on this, and I don't think he has it. I think he I think these are talking points and i think at the end of the day he sat in that senate over the past eight years rallying against obamacare and then he was one of those many senators and congressmen who uh, once obama was out of office and trump came into office had zero to put on the table uh which was the entire republican party no you're actually you're exactly right but to now and let, let's qualify that let's let you know because i don't want to make it sound like that i am sitting here just uh being one-sided about something because Here's what happened while the, all those eight years that Obama, that they were, t- or I guess six years, that they were uh, saying we're going to repeal and replace, repeal and replace. Remember, six years, yep. remember how they sent they sent uh, legislation up to for the president to be uh, to sign right. to do uh, just that, and he vetoed it, right, making it look like Obama was the obstructionist here. When the fact was, once we found we found out, they were sending up bullshit bills. There were substanceless bills they that they purposely that they purposely sent up there, knowing he'd veto it just for the news cycle, just for so that they can get reelected. Then when they find their their feet held to the fire, okay, um, it's been six years now. You guys got control of everything. What do you got? Uh, we'll get back to you. What the fuck do you mean you'll get back to me? You've been railing against this for six years. What do you mean you're going to get back to me? Half of America just voted you in to repeal and replace Obamacare. You're going to get back to me? Yep. And then when you do, it's a piece of crap. And the president himself called it mean. You're exactly the president right. called it mean. And now we're trying to uh, lay this all on a John McCain? That's ridiculous. Well, no, I think he's he, he definitely carries a lot of that, that uh, responsibility. I mean, it's not Trump's fault that there wasn't a replacement bill ready to go. No, there wasn't. You know, uh, but you but, know, for a guy who's uh, supposedly the the artist of all artists when it comes to making deals, it looks like that he only knows how to throw tantrums, call out people, drop grenades in the middle of conversations, walk away, and then hope things happen. You know, work out right. Well, this is the interesting dynamic is that we have a businessman running the show here in Florida, and Rick Scott, and I think he's done a. a pretty good job of of what he's done in florida i think the state's in pretty damn good shape um 
I don't think that applies to the national government. I think it changes completely. Uh, and uh, I, I think he, he tried to do a lot of that and has quickly realized that, you know, federal government isn't state government. And, uh, and you don't have anywhere near the amount of power or control that you do uh, as, as you would, as Rick Scott does here in Florida. Right. And that's the thing, too, is why. And by the way, when you see me getting worked up like this right now, and you're like, man, fish, quit pointing at the camera and yelling at me. Uh, it's it's I think I think that's a residual effect of this more earlier than today of all the angst and all the stuff that I had, uh, you know, at the beginning of the show. Yeah, I had to I had to push it down. And then, of course, we're going to hit on something where you go, oh, that'll, that'll be just a little <laughs> tiny, tss, tss, barely a match uh, spark. Yeah. And there you go. I start going uh, nuts. But wait, I, haven't, I haven't got to really what he said. Um, McCain ripped into President Trump in an interview because I want to run this by you uh-huh. saying he doesn't think the president has principles and beliefs i quote i don't agree with the way he's conducting his presidency obviously mccain said during an interview he's an individual that unfortunately is not anchored by a set of principles i think he's a person who takes advantage of situations Uh, mccain said trump was a successful as builder and entrepreneur quote but i don't think he has the fundamental underpinnings of of principles and beliefs he added i don't think there was any doubt about his views towards me but i'm a loyal republican McCain has criticized Trump in the past. Last month, McCain, uh, during an event, blasted the half-baked, spurious uh, nationalism in the United States. In response to McCain's comments, Trump's warm. At some point, I fight back and it won't be pretty. Yeah, go get him. Go get get the man that's dying of brain cancer. Get him! (laughs) McCain later shot back saying, I face far greater challenges than this. I bet. Yes, he has. Uh, What do you think about the statement that... that, uh, what or actually let me ask you this what principles what beliefs does trump have what fundamental principles does he not waver on no look i agree with mccain on this i really do me too um, it, i i think he's a great he, he's obviously a very smart and a uh you know people don't want to hear this because of the way he speaks he speaks in such fragmented nonsense but i have a feeling that he probably is a genius you know somebody i don't know what that range is is that 140 or whatever that is uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if he has some kind of a genius uh, about him and just, it, it, you know, flies. You know, well, everybody we, already has a, know, we already know from his business history that, you know, uh, he's willing to do anything and everything it takes to succeed in, at what he does. Um, and so a lot of times that's either shady business deals or bad whatever business takes. deals or whatever it takes. That, to me, tells me that that's somebody without principles. Um, I, again, have said before on this show, uh, and, and, and I say to a lot of my friends privately, but um, I think that Trump could have run as a Democrat and won. I think um, you know Trump ran as a Republican. I don't believe him to truly be a Republican to this day. Uh, no. and, <laughs> and, and so... Uh, the I again I don't disagree at all with what McCain's saying here because every indication uh, the, of of his behavior of the way he's governed as a president leads me to believe that McCain's absolutely absolutely right on that point. Um, our musical guest, uh, yes. Uh, are we still going to try to pull that off in here in the studio? Uh, yeah. If you want to go ahead, and maybe uh, uh, I don't know if you want to go into the next story, and I'll go downstairs and check and see where we're at. I think we're almost ready. Okay. If not, we'll uh, we'll bring them up here and uh... because yeah, because my thought is, or I was just you know thinking about this as we were talking about something else, and that that's the that's the upside to ADD is that you can have multiple conversations going on in your head at the same time. <coughs> or maybe that's not ADD. Maybe that's something else. Well, and I know Cords is trying to. Um... Well, you and I talked about doing a big show from downstairs yeah. in the in the main studio, right? Um, maybe instead of. T- we, we don't know if this will work or not or if we can get it on in time and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Maybe we just we we schedule a date where we know that room is empty this time of day and uh, and we just do the entire show from down I and mean, have everything set up. Well, you that's know, that, what we originally talked about. Remember? Right. Uh, right. And, and we just, you know, Mondays being what they are, we just didn't get uh, enough time to prep the studio downstairs for us to for us to do the show down there today. <laughs> Um, but ideally, yes, that's that's going to happen, um, and I think it would just be easier to shoot for that towards the end of the week. All right, well, let's do this then. Um, yeah, keep that shot right there. You go talk to Chords, and I'll hit uh, some of the local stuff um, until you get back.
Welcome to the Wake Dot Show. I'm Fisher, along with Johnny Torres. Thank you so much for your uh, support here in the uh, beginning. Uh, you were there for our our soft launch a few weeks ago. The hard, I guess that was about a month ago. The hard launch launch about uh, three weeks ago. Almost, you know, two and a half weeks ago. And um, and you'll be there for the grand opening. This is still. This is the way I, I feel like we're opening a restaurant here. The restaurant is open. And running, we're serving customers, but we're still trying to get the menu right. We're still trying to make sure that stuff's getting out on time and it's hot, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, oh, wait, there you are. <laughs> so let's talk about some stuff in the news. And uh, thank you for all the likes and the shares and the comments and so on. Uh, fathers of two Seminole Heights victims have different takes on, um, on police efforts. This is coming from the Tampa Bay dot com. Uh, one of them feels like he, the uh, police isn't doing they, they're not doing enough. And that Bob Buckhorn should step down. And another father of a victim uh, 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 feels like the uh, the inve- they're working very hard, as hard as they can in this investigation, and is um, is not unhappy with the effort. While two fathers are united in grief over the murders of their children, Kazimar Nyoba, Naboa, I'm sorry, I apologize for the name, and Kenny Hoffa, have very different takes on how Tampa's mayor and police are handling the four unsolved killings in uh, Seminole Heights. Uh, Naboa, father of Anthony Naboa, 20, was gunned down October 19th, says police are not doing enough to catch the killer, and Mayor uh, Buckhorn should step down. Quote, the fifth person could have been killed last night, and nothing is being done, he told the Tampa Bay Times on Monday. It's been a month and a half, and four people have been killed. The excuse we got was the police could have been there in another five seconds. That's what they said about my son. And so when it comes to uh, this kind of stuff, I, I'm, I'm never going to tee off on the purse. Even if I disagree, you know, I, I disagree with this sentiment, I'm never going to tee off on that person because they are grieving. And even if the things that they're saying that are coming out of their mouth are, uh, are frustrating to you as a citizen, you have to understand when somebody's in mourning, somebody's grieving, their, their brain is, gra- their world is turned upside down. They've had a chunk of their soul ripped out of their heart. And and they are trying to, um, they're just trying to make sense of it all. Uh, so so these kinds of things in the beginning, I I I, I try not to. I do. I understand. I, I, if I were sitting in front of the man, I'd go, sir. I understand. I understand the way you feel. I understand the way you feel. And I wouldn't even try to argue the opposite. Just let the man get it off his chest. Um, however, another one of the victim's fathers. Hoffa, the father of Monica Hoffa, 32, was shot and killed October 11th, praises Buckhorn and police and says victims' families need support, uh, need to support the people hunting the killer. Quote, I think the investigation is going quite well, he added, adding that he's spoken with both Buckhorn and the interim Tampa police chief, Brian Dugan, and that his brother spoke with Governor Rick Scott. Quote, the governor allocated all kinds of resources to assist in the capture of this criminal. I mean, that's a huge thing, too. You don't usually get the state involved like this. And the governor has been in Seminole Heights. Yeah. It was just last uh, two weeks ago that uh, Governor Rick Scott was there in Seminole Heights. Yeah, brought in some FHP. I heard there's people on horseback. Yep. I believe that the mayor, when I talk to him, generally feels as though he needs to take care of this. You know, I I think that's what most people feel again. I am not going to highlight Mr. Naboa and go, sir, you know. Come on, buddy. You need to lay up because this is a grieving father looking for answers. And I hope that he gets uh, I hope that they catch this guy and he gets uh, it's along with everybody else there in that area gets closure. But did you guys see the um, is this it here? The light up. Nah, no, that's I think. Oh, here it is at the very end. Did you see the uh, local brewery um, wants to help oh, light up? Oh, I can't. Post. Yeah. Re- just re- refresh that page. Well. I know that if I bring this up, other things are probably going to start firing off too. But um, but anyway, the 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 what they're doing is they're going through the Seminole Heights area, <coughs> knocking on doors, I guess, and going, "Hey, can we decorate your house? Can we decorate your lawn?" So they're trying to light up the entire area and bring that uh, that spirit of Christmas and giving and love and compassion and caring and community yep. into this one area as one man or one man or more are uh, is is sitting there waiting for his next opportunity to murder. Yep. Um, We still don't, I I, listen, I I'm with the frustrated father on the, in the, in the uh, category of, I can't believe that it's been this long people. It just, somebody else just got shot and killed last week and we still haven't been able to track this guy down. Um, 
and and, and I, it makes you wonder. You know, they were talking about uh, you know one of the city council members uh, stood up and said, uh, you know, this was a couple weeks ago now, and said that I know that somebody knows. I know that there are people in that area that know who this guy is, and you need to come forward. Um, that uh, you know that that snitch rule is not in effect, and that snitch rule is always in effect in certain communities. Um. Until until that reward gets to a certain amount, <laughs> that yeah. that that we're not calling the cops. I don't care if you're in the uh, the the mount the hills of West Virginia or in the uh, the the inner cities of Detroit. Um, there is a no snitch rule. Period. Until that <laughs> that reward gets high enough, you would think that 110 is it above, is it above 110? No, the last it's I still checked, 110. You would think that 110 thousand dollars would get it done. Yeah. But then that makes me wonder if if nobody does know. That how, however this guy is pulling this off, he is doing it in a way where people do not know who he is. It's just find it hard to believe <clears throat> that in a in a community that there's not one person that saw one of those stills and goes, oh, I recognize that gate, you know? I, rec- I recognize that, that, that body, that, sw- that something. Yeah. I recognize, I know who that is. Yeah. But um, I, I still haven't caught the guy, but uh, uh, I, I think it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time, and I like the way that the community is rallying, rallying around Seminole Heights because if this is about gentrification, if this guy is uh, shooting people because uh, he's he's Clint Eastwood in Grand Torino. Did you ever see Grand Torino? Yes. Uh, and he's just getting angry and angrier that uh, you know these people are moving in and, and ruining the neighborhood. Uh well, well, this definitely <clears throat> is a tsunami of gentr- gentrification coming back at this guy. If he thinks that he's going to kill person after person after person and stop the uh, the redevelopment of that area, um, well, it looks like he's wrong because the businesses in that area, the people in that area are just getting stronger and stronger and lighting up their streets. Yeah, look, and I think lighting up the community, I think, is the best way to do it. I think if the if the if all of a sudden you've got streets throughout Seminole Heights that are decorated for Christmas, that's going to draw in a lot of people to come and want to see the neighborhood. And uh, you know, you would hope that something like that's just going to spook people, um, you know, to to get out to stop with, at least stop what they're doing. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> but there's a part of me that doesn't want. I, I want them to try again so we can catch them. Right. You know? Yeah. Why don't you go be bait then, fish? No, all right, all right, all right. So. All right. Uh, yeah, so what's the uh, what's the verdict? It's looking pretty awesome downstairs. So if yeah. you want to go ahead and uh, I don't know if you want to maybe uh, play something or, or if uh, you want me to kind of just uh, talk a little bit, you know, and uh, and then you kind of make your way down there. So I'm going to walk right down there and you're going to throw it to me and then we'll be, uh, the, we'll be live? Yeah, you're not going to be able to hear me, um, I don't think, uh, mm-hmm. but Cord should be able to. And uh, and so he can give you directive on, uh, on on when to go ahead and start. But uh, here, actually, I'll, I'll, I don't know if you're going to be able to, to hear. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Uh, I'm trying to, to bring in. Here's what we're trying to do for the first time. And like I said, you know, you guys are the beginnings of this new show, The Wake Dot Show. We really appreciate your support, uh, your comments, your likes, your your, share, your shares. And uh, so you were you were with us on fr- last Friday when we did things remotely and pulled it off. Uh, which was a big technical advance, step forward, milestone. Right. And uh, we're doing something else because we have multiple facilities in this facility, multiple rooms, production facilities. Yep. And and so we got a band set up in our main room. And so we think we figured out where I can just run downstairs. Yes. Literally. It's too bad I don't have a, a camera where I can just I can take the camera on my walk. And, uh, well, walk if you all want, you can do it with your phone. I could send you the link where you can Mimo from your phone. And 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 and, and, and whatever is whatever is going to my phone will go to your board, and then you can punch me up from there. Yeah, here you. That is crazy. Let's get, let's get crazy. Let's, you can't do that. Let's, is let's get crazy here. I'm going to text you this link, and um, <clears throat> all right, here you go. And so, oh, I see the audio hey. coming in, but I don't have it. Let me see. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. I can't hear it for some reason, but I see the levels, which is... Uh, oh, I know. I think I know why. Hold on. Um, oh, so by the way, she she went to Bubba's studio first. And, and 
I got a, I got a message from Rob uh, Gargiulo, the, produ- uh, the producer for uh, Bubba the Love Sponge Show, and we're right next door. A woman showed up at our door looking for the Wake dot sh- the Wake Show today. I didn't know where to send her, but uh, we told her she was uh, she wasn't looking for us. Just a heads up, in case you have a guest running late this morning. <laughs> well, I got I got to uh, I got a message uh, Gargiulo because the last uh, exchange that he and I had was September twenty sixth, and he said, "Hey, man." Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, he's like, hey, hey, listen, um, you know, you want to come by? This is after I got let go. And he goes, Bubba wanted me to extend an offer to you to use the studios anytime you'd like. He talk, talked about it on the show this morning about how he disagreed with the programming change and said he'd love to help you out if you can. Feel free to reach out if you ever want to do something from our building, whether it's a podcast, a live show. He's happy to help. Best of luck. <clears throat> and that's right next door, literally right next door to us. Yeah. Um, I said, thank you very much. Tell Bubba, thank you. Uh, I'll take you guys. I might just make, take you guys up on that offer. Da da da. <coughs> then he goes. Uh, no problem. Our studios are open if you need them. If you are free on Friday, Bubba would like to have you in the studio. Our eight a.m. hour is uh, open if you can come by. And I go. I'd love to. However, I'm still waiting for my last check. I'm still waiting for money from Genesis Communications. I will let you know as soon as I get there because I don't want to get on there. And then all you know, we're having a conversation. All of a sudden, uh, you know, whatever happens, I just want to make sure that I got my my last paycheck. Yep. Well, the irony is, or not the irony, but the interesting part of the story is that uh, that they uh, are stiffing me out of six hundred and fifty dollars for the week that hurricane. I had to evacuate my family. Um. So I didn't turn an invoice that Friday. I normally turn in invoices that Friday to Genesis Communications Tampa, Bruce Maduri. And. But I had to evacuate that morning. A, f- a mandatory evacuation that morning. I still went in on the air, Johnny. I still went on the air that day. That's, that's the worst part about it. <clears throat> because and and my, wife, my wife was not happy. She's like, listen, we got a mandatory evacuation. It's beginning at 6 a.m. <clears throat> We're packed, ready to go. Let's get, in our, let's get up on, uh, on Friday morning and get out of here, get to my parents, and start boarding up their house and start sandbagging their house. Yeah. I said, no, honey. This is my responsibility to my community and to Genesis Communications. I'm being paid to go in and cover this part of the storm. I need to be there for the people of Tampa Bay and fulfill my obligations to Genesis Communications. I didn't send in my invoice that day because as soon as I got off the air, boom, I was out the door meeting my wife and uh, and evacuating. It wasn't until they let me go a couple weeks later that I realized, oh, crap, I never turned an invoice, so I resent that in. They said, yeah, no problem. At first, then week after week after week after week went by, and then they finally cut contact with me. They are not emailing me back or calling me back. So Bruce Maduri at Genesis Communications, over 650, is not paying me for the week that I had to evacuate because of her. That well, we are in a state of emergency, a state of emergency, official state of emergency, and you're not paying me for the week that I came in. Well, and that's why I think you need to go over to Bubba. Because Bubba's still on his station, and you need to talk about this and put him, put the the fire under him. Because I I typically I would say, man, that, you know that's kind of a bad move, right? Because you don't want to burn those bridges, especially in in this industry. But I think we're way past that. I think it's it's more than unacceptable, and I think nobody would would see uh, Bruce's side on in this situation. All right. So what am I? <clears throat> I just I just clicked on your link. Oh, I got to get the Mimo Live Reporter first and download that. Oh, do you? <clears throat> Hold on. Well, maybe not. <clears throat> Are you gonna try it? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm. It's downloading. I don't know how long it's going to take, but uh, you know, just give me a second here. Well, you we should be on good Wi-Fi. And then, uh, and then after that, you're saying that we can go right down to. Uh, I I I, oh, I I can't wait. I can't wait. So what you're saying? <laughs> Is that all of a sudden I'm going to be able to hit a button? You're going to punch me up over there, and then I can walk through the building. Yeah, yeah, you can walk through the building, and I'll and I'll have a live camera. This is ridiculous. Yeah. So let me make the adjustments on on my end over here to kind of prep for that. But um, so looks like it's finished. But come on, come on, you you can do it. All right. Well, maybe not. <laughs> no. It well, it's, it, it you know how the little circle goes all the way around. Well, then all of a sudden, it just stopped. Although it looks complete, but it's not, or else it would give me that little open symbol. 
So uh, so let's do this then. Let's go ahead. Do you want to? Uh, you want me to pull up, or if you want to pull up, uh, bake more pies and play a well, one of you, our videos. You can because I don't have the. Uh... I don't have the the the, the feed on this end, so the computer feed. Right. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and watching me uh, play on my computer. Uh, it's the Wake Dot Show. We are getting ready to go uh, downstairs. Let's see here. Bake more pies. Uh, bake more pies. By the way, are the facilities. Bake more pies studios are the facilities that we use. And what I'm going to do is just pull up a video of one of the uh, bands that have been in here in the past. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's pull up. Where are we? And there's a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of uh, repostings of, of this show on Bake More, uh, Bake More Pies as well. Just click on videos. <clears throat> Man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for this part of it. I guess I should just... Oh wait! I didn't play this. The row. Uh, no, this is this was this month's okay uh, performance. Still, still stuck on. Oh, I'll learn more later. Three hundred and sixty solutions. How do I how do I get rid of this ad? Oh, I don't know. What'd you do over there? Well, the Bake More Pies logo's right there. So this is you guys. Well, you clicked on something. Click back. Go back. All right. Enough of this. Enough of this. I, I can't do this. Um, <clears throat> there, just click on the video. That's what I did. No, you're clicking. Click on the actual video. Oh, I clicked on the video. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think they're coming to you live from the Bake More Pie Studios right here in Tampa, Florida. Powered by the Gasparilla Music Festival. Yeah, you can go full screen with it. All right, just hope that. And how you can win these. All right, I'm going out later on. I can hear. But first, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Rose Shoma. Well, hello, and what, so how does this work? Am I? Are we on in our own separate like feed, or this is the original Wake Dot Show? Like it's being pumped into the Wake Dot Show. 
All right, so welcome to the Wake Dot Show, and thank you so much for uh, listening all morning long. I'm a Fisher, and we have uh, a musical guest for you. And if you're wondering where we are, we're at the Bake More Pies facilities, Bake More Pies Studios, and we have this huge, huge, they call it a psych wall, right? and room here uh, where you can do all kinds of different things for uh, people, for clients and whatnot. And we can even do the show here. We can also have live music, as a lot of you are familiar with, with the Bake More music series. Now we're here now <clears throat> with Erica. Damn it. Desegli. Des Erica. Excited for you guys to get up early in the morning. Now, I heard, is, is it true that you guys ended up at Bubba and the Love Sponge Studio first? Oh, just for a moment. Just for a moment? Yeah. I'm surprised that he didn't, he didn't go, yeah, yeah, we're Bake More Pies. Come on, we're the Wake Dot Show. They actually uh, invited me to go to the green room and while well, they figured it out. And I said, well, if you don't know who I am, you probably aren't expecting me. I think I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, that's, that's probably a smart move on your part. Uh, well, thank you so much for coming by our facilities this morning. You guys are going to do a couple of uh, songs for us. Yeah. And uh, what do we need to know about these songs? These are This is original music of yours. It is, yes. Uh, the first song we'll do is called Some Rainy Day, and it's a single that is available and up and running on iTunes and all of the other uh, music platforms that you can imagine. And then we'll close with a, an original Christmas song. Ooh. All right. So, oh, sorry, sorry. Tis the season. <laughs> and Will? Yeah. Hi. How's it going? Doing all right. Well, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm a guitar player, and uh, I love playing with Erica, and we're going to get to play some of her cool originals today. All right, let's hear it. Thank you so much for tuning into the Wake Doc Show. Thank you. Ready, Ready let's do it. You keep me hanging around for some rainy day. The sad, sad truth that I found is that sun won't go away. Oh, the flowers are blooming in the sky. Is it bright, baby blue? But no blue could match the color of my heart since I lost you. Once upon a happier time, I had love on my mind. But things don't always go like a plan. It happens time after time. Oh, the birds singing so sweet and on their wings, they're bringing good news. But no news could change the state of my sad heart since I lost you. So bring on the rain, play me the blues. I'll sing along till the rain falls as hard as I fell for you. The damage is done You play with fire Bound to get burned But it sure was fun Oh, the flame kind of faded now And all day long I'm singing the blues But no blues could match the color of my heart since I lost you So bring on the rain Play me the blues I'll sing along till the rain falls as hard as I fell for you
you keep me hanging around for some rainy day. The sad, sad truth that I found is that sun won't go away. All oh, the flowers are blooming and the sky is a bright baby blue. But no blue could match the color of my heart. Oh, no news could change the state of my sad heart. No, the blues can't hold a candle to my heart. Since I lost you, I feel for you. Bring on the rain. Thank you. We'll go right into the next one. This is a song I call Without the Snow, and it's a Christmas song that I wrote about uh, the importance of being with the ones that you love during the holidays. I can live without the snow I sure don't miss the cold And it's nice to feel the sun shining down But this time of year feels different now Without you here, I don't know how to spread some cheer In this tinsel town Can't anyone anywhere hear my prayer? Or am I left all by myself to stare at the strings and lights twinkling bright all over the tree? Only one thing more missing. I can't help for wishing this Christmas you'd come home to me. And so here I am at home, open windows all alone. There's a singing ringing down the street But those church bells just don't sound the same Can't you hear me calling out your name? If you were here this holiday would be so sweet Can't anyone anywhere hear my prayer? Or am I left all by myself to stare at the strings and lights twinkling bright all over the tree? Only one thing more missing. I can't help for wishing this Christmas you'd come home to me. Would you bring him, dear Jesus, if you could? You know I've tried to be so good And that angel's watching over me from the top of the tree Only one thing more missing I can't help for wishing This Christmas you'd come home to me For Christmas, please come home to me. This Christmas, come home to me. I can live without the snow. I sure don't miss the cold. And it's nice to feel the sun shining down. Thank you. All right. Here's okay. what we're thinking. Here's what we're thinking. 
Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and streaming the Awake Doc Show. This is Erica DeSegli. And I know you guys had three songs prepared. Sure. Would you like to go ahead and do that third? Because let me tell you, I know you guys uh, were uh, busy setting up and you, you, you weren't here for the beginning of the show, but it was a, there was a lot of drama and a lot of anxiety. And, <laughs> and your, beautiful, your beautiful voice has, has changed the mood in the room. So I'd like to continue that if you don't mind. All right. For sure. Thank you. Thanks so much. This is another original song that is not available yet out on social uh, music platforms, but it is almost ready. I'm currently uh, recording and finishing it up at um, Joe Kosas's studio in Tampa, Florida. So uh, we're just putting on some finishing touches, and this song is called First Love Feeling. Knock, 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 I know you're here It's becoming very clear Just let me in, I'll even bring the beer I can't get you out my mind So open up the door, it's time I bet you're gonna like what you will find Let's pull out of this parking lot And let me show you what I've got I think we just might be bound for glory Can you hear my heartbeat from across the room? Coming on strong, you better kiss me soon Don't make me wait, this restless heart can't take it Can I sweep me right up off my feet The way you moved on it and made a home in my dreams It's meant to be, ooh, this you and me Wishing I could put it in a box for safekeeping Tie it up with a pretty bow, yeah, I know it's fleeting Nothing in this whole wide, wonderful world Like that first love feeling Ring, 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 pick up the phone I am feeling so alone And you're the only one can turn me on I know that your company Is exactly what this cowgirl needs So come on boy, quit being such a tease Just a chance to let me sing I have got a song to sing for you or two Can you hear my heartbeat from across the room? Coming on strong, you better kiss me soon Don't make me wait, this restless heart can't take it You kind of swept me right up off my feet The way you moved on it and made a home in my dreams It's meant to be you and me Wishing I could put it in a box for safekeeping Tie it up with a pretty bow, yeah I know it's fleeting Nothing in this whole wide wonderful world Like that first love feeling Your birthday is the best, but it just don't last A roller coaster ride's fun, but it's over so fast There's only one thing I've come to know worth holding on to Can you hear my heartbeat from across the room? Coming on strong, you better kiss me soon Don't make me wait, this restless heart can't take it can I swept me right up off my feet The way you moved on in and made a home in my dreams It's meant to be, ooh, this you and me Wishing I could put it in a box for safekeeping Tie it up with a pretty bow, yeah, I know it's fleeting Nothing in this whole wide, 
wonderful world like that first love feeling. Time we need to get a studio full of people in here for you. Okay. Uh, right. Thank you so much, Erica Desegli. Desigli. Yes. And uh, you can track her down on Spotify and and help uh, support her on iTunes and uh, download some. Erica Desegli Music dot com. And then um, Johnny's saying that you play around town, yes. uh, the Hard Rock, quite frequently. Um, I don't have any of those dates. Okay. Tonight, we're at Yemen's in Tampa for their um, open mic jam, and I'm the featured artist that's at 9.30 tonight. Mike will be there with me, and another uh, Mike Pinder playing some drums for me, so it's going to be a good time, and we'll uh, be rocking and rolling tonight at 9.30 at Yemen's, and all of my dates are on my website, so check it out, ericadesiglimusic.com. And thank you so much for tuning into the Wake Dot Show, and thank you so much to the both of you for helping us break in this room for the Wake Dot Show. Have a great afternoon. If you're not going out to see her tonight, I'll be doing trivia on St. Pete Beach <laughs> from Ooh. seven. Are you, Ooh, what? Trivia, trivia, live music. Are you are you knocking my trivia nights? No, no. It helps pay the I bills. <laughs> I love trivia. Um, thank you, thank you so much for being a part of the Wake Dot Show and sharing and liking and all that good stuff. So thank you. Have a great day. Bye.